This podcast is brought to you by Odiogo.com. Obama power grab for entire world stuns Russia, China. New reports emerging in the Kremlin today from the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit APEC in Hawaii are stating that both Russian and Chinese diplomats were stunned upon learning that the United States Nobel Peace Prize winning leader, President Barack Obama, has ordered U.S. military forces into both Nigeria and Australia in what they describe as his plan to take over the entire world for his crony capitalist backers. According to these reports, Nigerian military sources have confirmed Obama's plan to deploy U.S. military forces in their country in yet another expansion of the Pentagon's shadow war on the African continent designed to take control of this region's vast oil and mineral resources, and he is, also, planning on announcing during his upcoming visit to Australia the deployment of U.S. Marine forces to ward off what the Americans are calling the China threat. With more than 900 U.S. military bases on all seven continents, and with a defense budget that outspends all of the other nations in the world combined, Russian diplomats warn that these latest deployments strip bear Obama's true intentions which they describe as being nothing short of total world domination. To understand Obama's true motivations, these reports say, one has to realize that the West's most powerful bankers who have given him more money than any politician, in any country, in modern human history far surpassing the millions given to Nazi Germany's aid off Hitler by U.S. and European industrialists led by the former U.S. President George W. Bush's grandfather, the late U.S. Senator Prescott Bush, who was charged for his crimes under the Trading with Enemies Act during World War II sensing the rise of a growing American dictatorship headed by Obama, Prime Minister Putin this past week lashed out at the West by describing them as arrogant world powers who would stop at nothing to achieve their goals, and reserving special condemnation of both the US and UK for violating the UN resolution against Libya that now finds NATO under investigation by the International Criminal Court ICC for the many war crimes it committed. China, likewise, this past week mocked the US that they said was controlled by fawning political leaders seeking re-election who have created an entitlement culture, where the American public has grown dependent on government largesse and at the opening of the APEC engaged in a testy exchange with the U.S. over a new proposed Pacific trade pact. Not just to Russia and China are fears of Obama rising either as U.S. Congressman and 2012 presidential hopeful, Ron Paul warned this past week that the Obama presidency warned is on the verge of being a dictatorship and U.S. Supreme Court Justice Breyer further warned that the Obama regime was on the verge of creating an Orwellian government. Important to note about Obama's United States is that never before in modern history has the world's leading economic power experienced a saving shortfall of such epic proportions as America is now experiencing and is leading to their fast total economic collapse, and with the European Central Bank ECB now warning that there is little left it can do to save the Eurozone this catastrophic event may very well be already underway caused the head of China's biggest ratings agency, Dogong Global Credit Rating to warn of another U.S. credit downgrade. Unfortunately for the American people in all of these events is they're not being allowed to know about any of them due to their mainstream media not telling them, a point brought up in an article today detailing how in the past two weeks they have been subjected to nearly 120 stories about the sex life of presidential contender Herman Cain while at the same time, one. Only three major networks covered Obama sending U.S. troops in Uganda. Two. Only one major news network covered the scandal of the Obama regime sending guns to Mexico's gun cartels. 3. No major network covered the eighth largest bankruptcy in U.S. history of MF Global whose CEO was top Obama advisor, and former Goldman Sachs CEO, and former Democratic Governor of New Jersey John Corazin. 4. No major network has covered the Solyndra scandal that allowed $500 million in U.S. taxpayer money to be swindled away by Obama regime cronies. And in, perhaps, the most egregious example of how far mainstream journalism has fallen in the U.S. was the ABC television news network morning show host George Stephanopoulos attacking Herman Cain over the sex allegation made against him the same George Stephanopoulos who when he was a top aide of President Bill Clinton praised the mainstream media for keeping what they knew secret from the American people and in his own words on page 267 of his autobiography All Too Human, most important, I wanted to keep reports of Paula. Jones press conference off television. 
it wasn't a hard sell. In a country whose president, a former professor of constitutional law nonetheless, can take an oath to uphold the Constitution and then spend every waking moment trying to dig its grave, and who is now warned has become prosecutor, judge and jury in the targeted killings of any American citizen he so chooses, one can see clearing why China is now seeking to protect its vast oil wealth in the South China Sea and why Putin has called for a Eurasian Union to protect Russia's energy future. What remains to be seen is if Obama and the powerful Western bankers backing him can succeed in their plans to take over the entire world without plunging us all into total war history says that they can't. Time will surely tell.